Well, I've printed out the circuit here to take a look at it and I've highlighted some of the wiring on it uh, just to make things a little bit easier. And this red is, I've highlighted the HT. Orange here highlighted a secondary HT used for the screens. In the light blue I've highlighted the AGC signal which we'll talk about later. And in green the basic signal path through the circuit. So let's start at the aerial. It's as good a place as any to start. Aerial connector here, it's brought down to two transformers. There's a gang switching arrangement through the whole device that allows you to select medium wave, short wave, and the phono input for the record player. So you can see this switching arrangement here will actually select a different transformer here depending on the on the band that's chosen and L3 and L4 are for the medium wave L1 L2 transformer is for the short wave and in the grid circuit of this particular valve we also have a couple of other tuned circuits which are switched in as well so we've got a different tune circuit for short wave and medium wave for the local oscillator. So we've got the aerial signal being applied to this grid on the valve and we've got the local oscillator being applied on the control grid of this particular valve. So we get a mixing happening in this valve and at the anode we have the potential for two different frequencies. The sum and the difference of, of the local oscillator and the and the aerial tuned circuit. Now we've got a tuned circuit in the output of that particular valve so we'll be selecting the intermediate frequency that we're interested in which in this particular device happens to be 457.5 uh, kilohertz. So the tuning capacitor or the yeah the tuning capacitor or the tuning control for this particular device is a ganged uh, capacitor and it's these two elements here one in the local oscillator component and the other in the aerial circuit so the aerial and the local oscillator are tuned by the actual tuning control okay so our signal that we're interested in is appearing across this transformer and it's coupled through this transformer onto the grid of our IF amplifier valve which amplifies that signal and that appears on the anode of this particular valve which again we have another tuned circuit here and transformer so the amplified signal is coupled through this transformer and presents on the anode of this diode this particular valve is a dual diode uh, single triode valve and this uh, this particular diode is used to demodulate the signal and the output of that is actually appearing across our volume control and there's some filtering here as, as well to try and get rid of all that IF frequency. The signal is picked up off the volume control and coupled through this capacitor onto the control grid of the triode component. So there's an amplif amplification stage here and the amplified signal appearing on the anode is again capacitively coupled through to the control grid on our output stage. This control here is the tone control so this basically just varies the frequency response of the signal as it's coupled through onto that particular grid. The signal at the anode is greatly amplified and passes through our audio output transformer and onto the voice coil of the actual speaker. Okay so there's one other active device in this circuit and that's this rectifier uh, valve down the bottom here. So basically a full wave uh, bridge rectified signal appears across this capacitor to form the HT value. We have a resistor capacitor network here to lower the voltage slightly to generate a second HT value 
which is used for the screen on that particular output valve as well as the anode supply on the other particular valves. We also have a, another resistor network here for the screen grid on these particular valves here. Okay, one other thing I should mention, the demodulated signal that's appearing across this particular variable resistor, this signal is also uh, used for automatic gain control or, or sometimes called AVC, automatic volume control. So this DC signal is fed back through to the control grid on the IF amplifier and through this various switching network back onto this other grid in the mixing valve. So as signal increases, we get some negative feedback to make sure that we don't overdrive these particular valves. And there's some capacitors throughout this circuit as well, there and there. So if we get something like a lightning strike, it doesn't wind the AGC right up very quickly. So the AGC is, is, is quite important, especially on the shortwave, where stations tend to fade in and out, and this tends to try and keep that volume level fairly constant. Okay, so what can give trouble in this? Mainly the capacitors. These electrolytics in the supply this coupling capacitor here that's providing negative feedback to stabilize the output valve can give troubles and a lot of these other capacitors are also uh, paper capacitors so quite old and a little bit nasty the majority of these will change out to uh, new capacitors uh, the other things that can give problems obviously are the valves just basically losing emission and just needing to be replaced. The coils and trimmers all look okay and the resistors, as long as there's no other problems, they, they should be fine as well. Okay, well, next time we look at this, I think we'll do some voltage measurements around the actual valve just to make sure that all of the, the voltages are looking okay. And I've got some capacitors on order to replace these electrolytics and I think I should have most of the others already. So we'll do a few cursory measurements to make sure everything looks reasonably okay, change out those capacitors and see how it looks at that point in time.